Mm-hmm. <clears throat>
The shepherds went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in a manger. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit <coughs> be with you all. You're very welcome this morning to join Dr. Jainus and Lion for this celebration of the Feast of the Holy Family. Today the Church puts before us the example, the Holy Family is an inspiration and an example to all families. So as we gather here to celebrate this feast on this first Sunday of, in, after Christmas, let us first begin by acknowledging our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary and Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us give glory to God as the angels give glory to sing this the glory in on that first Christmas. Glory to God in the highest, to the Lord to peace, to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world by our mercy. You take away the sins of the world and receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. For you will own the Holy One, you will own the Lord, you will own the Most High Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who are pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family, graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life in the bonds of charity. And so, in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal rewards. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit of God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Ecclesiastes. This is the word of the Lord. 
The response is, Blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in His ways. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Oh, blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in His ways. By the labor of your hand you shall lead. You will be happy and prosper. Response. Your wife like a fruitful vine in the heart of your house. Your children like shoots of the olive around your table. Response. Indeed, thus should be blessed the man who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion all the days of your life. Response. The second reading is your letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. You are God's chosen race, his saints, he loves you, and you should be clothed in sincere compassion, in kindness and humility, gentleness and patience. Bear with one another, forgive each other as soon as the heart begins. The Lord has forgiven that you, now you must forgive each other. Over all these clothes, to keep them together and to complete them, put on love, and may the peace of Christ reign in your hearts, because it is for this that you are called together as parts of one body. Always be thankful. Let the message of Christ in all its richness find a home with you. Teach each other and advise each other in all wisdom. With gratitude in your heart, sing psalms and hymns and inspire songs to God. And never say or do anything except in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Wives, give way to your husbands as you should in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives. Treat them with gentleness. Children, be obedient to your parents always, because that is what will please the Lord. Parents, do not drive your children to resentment, or you will make them feel frustrated. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. May the peace of Christ reign in your heart. Let the message of Christ find a home in you. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the day came for them to be purified and laid down by the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, observing what stands written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male must be consecrated to the Lord, and also offering sacrifice in accordance with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now in Jerusalem there was a man named Simeon. He was an upright and devout man. He looked forward to Israel's comforting, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death until he had set eyes on the Christ of the Lord. Prompted by the Spirit, he came to the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the law required, he took the child into his arms. He blessed God and he said, Now, Master, you can let your servant go in peace just as you promised, because my eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared for all the nations to see, a light to enlighten the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. As the child's father and mother stood there, wondering at all the things that were being said about him, Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, You see this child? destined to be a sign that is rejected, and a sword will pierce your own soul too, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be laid bare. There was a prophetess also, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel 
of the tribe of Asher. She was well advanced in years. Her days of girlhood over, she had been married for seven years before becoming a widow. She was now 84 years old and never left the temple, serving God night and day with fasting and prayer. She came by at that moment and began to praise God. And she spoke of the child to all who looked forward to the deliverance of Jerusalem. When they had done everything the law of the Lord required, they went back to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. Meanwhile, the child grew to maturity and he was filled with wisdom, and God's favour was with him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to Today is the feast of the Holy Family, and it is a day when we are called to reflect a little on family and on family life. Family is one of the most important aspects of our life. We are born into a family, we have experienced family, and family is very important in the makeup of any in the, in the because it's in families that make up a community. Today there is a great deal of debate and controversy over what is a family, what constitutes a family. We shouldn't be too worried over that because it is God who created the family and therefore it is God who should define what a family really is. And God does. He does it in Scripture. We know from the beginning of the Bible, Genesis, that God created them male and female. And that he created them that a man should leave father and mother and be, and be joined with his wife and the two become one. This is, you know, scripture tells us much about marriage and, and family. And Family is essentially a relationship, a special relationship that exists between husband and wife. And this relationship, just as man and woman, man, they are, that we are created in the image of God, the family is also very much an image of the life of God, the love that exists between the Father and the Son the, and the Holy Spirit is, and is at the very heart of the family and is an image of, of what uh, expresses what the family is really about, that, that image, the image of God, the three persons in communion, a communion of love. And that, talk, that speaks to us of what a family is meant to be. The love of God, God's life, God's love, is a, is a fruitful love. We see it that God created the world. It is the outpouring of his love out in, uh, to, to, into creation. And God's love is fruitful. And the love of man and woman too is fruitful. And that fruit, fruitfulness is especially shown in children. Children are a heritage of the Lord. They, 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 are, they are the fruit of the love of, of husband and wife. And we know that we know that the you know that family is very important for children. The greatest blessing that any child can have in life is to grow up in a family where there is real love, where there is a real, a, a, a real love between the father and the mother. You know, too often today we see so many children are, are, have to go through the experience of a broken home or a dysfunctional family, and this is not what this is not what God intended for us to be. God intended every child to grow up in a in a family where that was united and where there was. So, and 
you know, today we, I, I, it would seem at times that the state would like maybe to see the family disappear and the children be brought up in crashes. But that isn't, that isn't the ideal way, you know, we, that children can be raised. Children need parents, they need that exclusive and uh, love that only parents can give them real love of a father and a mother. Another aspect is that, you know, that family is the foundation, the, the building block of community. A community is not made up of a collection of individuals. It is made up of a union of families, working together for the good of the children in the community working together for the good of all. And that is very much the nature of a community. Different from the kind of, you know, that idea that we just individuals deciding on a community. We're not where we are is families at the, at the very heart of a community. And we see that, you know, breakdowns in community are usually, you know, is a breakdown in family life. It is a breakdown, it is, you know, where communities become dysfunctional, it is because the families that make up the community are dysfunctional. So the, uh, the community depends, and the health of the community depends very much on the health of the family. And so the, 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 more, the more united and, and healthy the family is, the more united and healthy the community will be. The church also, you know, Christ himself was born into a family. He, he showed us the dignity of the family by choosing, God choosing to come into the world through a family, the, the family of Mary and Joseph. And God chose this to, to show us the dignity and the beauty that he intended for the family. And, and uh, the way in which a family is to live together is beautifully expressed in the second reading today, where you know, it tells us what, what is necessary for a good family life. Be clothed in sincere compassion, in kindness and humility, gentleness and patience. These are the qualities that are needed. Bear with one another. Forgive each other as soon as a quarrel begins. Put on love. Love be the, the clothes, the clothes that the family wear. And if this is done, if this is the way a family lives, we can be sure that the peace of Christ will reign in their hearts. So that is, so today, again, the feast of the Holy Family, again, a call to Christians to look for the meaning of family and the and the understanding and the definition of family, not in the not in the wisdom of the world today, but to look for it in the scriptures, in God's word, what God tells us about the family. And because it is he who created the family, and therefore it is he who knows best how the family should be, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I believe in one God, Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen in the I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father of the Lord. God from God, night from night, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, and through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, who is incarnate, virgin, nearly between them. For our 
efficient way make firm and the long hail to this anniversary of course at this time. Lord, so pray for Mark Gilligan. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through him the holy exchange that restores our life has shone forth today in splendour, when our frailty is assumed by your work. Not only does human mortality receive unending honour, but by this wondrous union, we too are made eternal. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Holy, 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 holy God, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the night. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all that you have created and rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for your for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks and praise, he broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for us and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension from into heaven, and as we look forward to his sacred to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with, with Saint Stephen, with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for our failing heaven. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, 
advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Dennis, our Bishop, the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to me and, and to Mark, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world everything that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Let us now pray in the words our Saviour taught us. Our Father, Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you all. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to succor the Lamb. on the earth, and he lived among us. Let us pray. Bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly, constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world, we may share their company forever, through Christ our Lord. Masses during the week will be at 10 o'clock online. 